Welcome back to the Thrifted Jagan. Today we have a super awesome project. One of the most favorite things I've ever made. And I'm really excited to show it to you, how we made it. It was easy, you can do it. Follow along and I'll show you how. Come on, let's go. Welcome back to the Thrifted Dragon. I have a really awesome project inspired by folklore, and this one is based on Baba Yaga and her hut, which has chicken legs. I turned this and a birdhouse from both from the Dollar Tree. Well, it used to be a dollar. I guess that they have changed their prices to maybe a buck fifty. This is the first miniature thing I've ever made. Besides painting miniatures, I've never put anything together like this before and it was really fun. It turned out super cool and unique. So let's go make one because I gotta make one. Let's go. To get started, I'm using this bird house and this bird skeleton, both from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> and that would be pretty easy right there. Bam, paint it, you're done. But let's take this a step further. I cut a little hole for the door on the back side and file that down. I had to use a pumpkin carver and exacto blade to get that hole in there. Now I also decided that I wanted to add some lights because I like to add lights to my projects lately and I built a little battery holder out of cardboard. Then I just tape that closed and make sure that my battery case fits in there. Now I'm gonna start building up on my skeletal legs here, right in the center. I'm gonna I'm gonna hot glue some brackets in there, braces. So I put one board underneath, one board on top, and I sandwich those legs in between so it'll help distribute the weight better. I placed my battery pack right on top there and I start just building up the sides so I have a flat top to put my base on. And there's the base I, I decided that size was good. And now to tuck in some of those uh, little holes on the bottom there, I'm going to tuck in some pieces of aluminum foil all crumpled up just in certain spots that I have somewhere to glue my fake fur on and it looks also kind of like terrain. Now using chipboard, I'm going to cut some 2x4 looking planks for my siding and this is going to be rough. So I just kind of measured it to the side of the birdhouse and I'm gluing that on. Using tacky glue. I add those to the side of my shack. Now I'm peeling some of that corrugated cardboard that I have so I can use the corrugation as a roof. Roofing. It looks like a tin roof. And I'm just measuring that so I can put a couple different tiers of roofing to give it more detail. And I liked the wonky edges, so I left some wonky edges when I glued them on. thought it would be nice if she had a little overhang that she could walk under while she was going to her door. So I built this with a little piece of cardboard and I popped that on the front. It's curved. 
Here I'm adding a piece of chipboard to the top to cap it off. Now I'm going to work on that front piece and just add little slices of chipboard to bring it out to a little roof addition. And I just build that around, around the front piece by piece. It's a shack, so none of this has to be perfect. Now I'm adding, uh, this is going to be a chimney, but it kind of looks like a tower, so that's what I added. And I'm just working around the house to add more detail and more planks, more boards. This chipboard works really well for more detail. Here I wanted some more detail on those chicken legs and so I'm using Model Magic and I'm making little balls of clay and pressing it so it looks like scaly chicken legs instead of bony chicken legs. And I used a little tacky glue to make sure that that stayed in place. I'm making some little trees with branches and more Model Magic. And you'll see for each step of the process, I'm gonna paint everything black before I continue. So this part is finished, I'm gonna paint it black. And then I will do some dry brushing over that after it's dried. So for the legs, I'm painting it black. Now the side here, I thought it would be fun to add some of this fur that I had. And I just did that in certain patches. I didn't put it everywhere, so. I gave it really neat effect and more detail. And after the places have dried that I put the base coat of black, I'm doing some dry brushing over using different colors. Different browns, tans, greens. And then for the roof, I use some shiny paint that I had that looks like tin, makes it look like tin roof. Old tin roof, had to age that as well. Now I decided that she needed a place for her coffee in the morning. Where's she gonna have her friends hang out? Well, let's build a terrace <laughs> directly under her shack. So I'm just measuring out some board that I can use for the terrace walls. And I wanted them all to be similar shape. Really, I was just looking for the edge posts. After cutting out my pieces, I attached them together with hot glue. And then for extra stability on the insides of the seams, I put another bead of hot glue and a couple more little pieces of chipboard on the legs. And I built this little frame that's going to go under the shack. We'll build a terrace. Why not?
Now I'm cutting out some chipboard for some terrace stones and I'm also using model magic on the base. I wanted to add this on a base so it wasn't floppy. <laughs> and I'm building terrace pavers with model magic. And then I'm going to do my base coat in black. Ooh, I was stuck on there. I want to use this thinner paper for the edge of my tiki torches that I'm making for around the shack. And I'm just gluing the paper on with some hot glue, wrapping it around, attaching it with more hot glue. And then I paint this brown with streaks, I'm trying to make it look more wood-like. I thought the paper would look more wood-like, wood but it needed some more texture. I added some hot glue to the tips of the lights to try to make it look like flames. And that did a really good job. It was a little fiddly. I had to keep fiddling with it, but um, I got a flame on the tip of all the lights except for two, the two lights on the end that I'm going to tuck into the shack. And then I painted those orange. This part was a little fiddly, but I used some tacky glue that was a little bit watered down so it would go between each of these stones and then I sprinkled on the flocking and I did this pretty much stone by stone. So after I add the flocking, I can take a dry brush and brush off the excess. To add the lights, I just use hot glue. I wanted four on each level and then the two in the house. To hide the wires, I'm just using a little bits of masking tape over the wires. And I'm going to add my trees too because I want to paint that masking tape and I figure I could paint the bases of these trees at the same time. Also before I start painting I added some bits of twine to act as vines just to give it a little more detail and to help camouflage those lights a little bit better, the light strands. Now with the hot glue you can also add terrain and um, it just makes it look more thicker and bumpier by dabbing it into the hot glue. But just do little sections at a time if you do this because the hot glue cools down quickly and you can't add any more into there. So little sections at a time.
Alright, time your life! But now, something is about to happen. I just want to play a game with you. Huh? What are you doing in my swamp? <laughs> That's our cast of characters added into our shack, and I'm so happy with the results. This is going to be the cherry on top, my blue dragon. If you have any questions about how I did anything that you see in this project that I, I might not have shown in the video because there was a lot that I couldn't video and there's even a lot that I can't really take pictures of. I'll show you. Hold on just a second. See inside her hut you can't even see inside her hut but there's a fireplace, there's plank wood floors, I painted the walls and I ended up covering it up with this fabric that I used for her doorway. So I didn't end up showing any of that part of the project. I also cut out the back of the birdhouse to make this doorway. The front of the birdhouse is used, so I put a stained glass window. And that's just a piece of decoration that I got off some Halloween garland from the Dollar Tree. And I used the hole here for the perch that I ran my two lights through. Two of my lights through to give the inside of the house some light too for her fireplace. And I think it turned out so cool. Her little fox friend and bear friend, they came from Hobby Lobby and they were half off that day. So I got that, I think I got that little bear for about $3.50. And I got two of these little foxes for about the same price. The rest of the minis I had got from gaming and I thought they would be so cool to make it look like, you know, there's a lot going on here. She's either having a party or, <laughs> There's some definitely deep conversation going on down here. And I just love this magical, real magical hut. I did my best to show it to you, but just message me on Facebook or put it as a comment in the video and I'll get to your comments and I'll show you how I did anything that you need help with. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you have a beautiful week and we'll see what happens next week. Oh, I'll let you know when I know. All right, bye. Follow me on Facebook, The Thrifted Dragon, or YouTube, which is where we're at. I'm also on Rumble, and find me, message me, get to know me. Let's, let's be friends. All right, cool. Well, I'll see you next time. Come on over next time. Bye-bye. Welcome back to the Thrifted Dragon. Today we're making Baba Yaga's hut. To make that, we're using Dollar Tree ingredients. I just used old bird bones. It's de it's dedicated to <laughs> the bird wasn't using them no more. And I use this little bird house since it's also vacant. Get out! Hot. Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye bye. bye.